is the GIS News Hour for Wednesday, May 9. I am Leslie Ann Johnson Cornwall. In the headlines, glowing tribute paid to prominent legal official Mr. Ernest Wilkinson, who died last week. Representatives from Illinois Institute seeking to woo more TAMCC students and the OECS to benefit from further commitments from Brazil. Details are next. ICT and its corporate sponsors present Techspo Grenada's Technology Exposition. Come experience the latest technologies by industry leaders or participate in engaging discussions on topics such as cloud computing, digital marketing, voice over internet protocol, green technologies, and more. Witness the many ways ICT can transform your lives. So mark the date. It's the second annual Techspo Grenada Trade Center, May 17th to 19th. Taxpo, connecting communities through emerging technologies. Shop online at your favorite stores around the world and your package will be delivered to your doorstep right here in Grenada. The Grenada Postal Corporation brings you closer to the rest of the world with GPC Global. GPC Global is a new, exciting, and cost-effective service. For less than $20 US, you can have your own personal mailbox in the US and off you go shopping. You can view your shipment as it moves 24-7 with up-to-the-minute tracking. Make your purchase and GPC Global will do the rest, even customs clearance. We make it easy and hassle-free. GPC Global, the world at your fingertips. Dependable, reliable and safe. Welcome back, viewers. Members of the legal fraternity paid glowing tribute on Wednesday to Mr. Ernest Clarence Wilkinson, QC, retired chief registrar of the Windward and Leeward Islands and Queen's Council of the Law Chambers of Wilkinson, Wilkinson and Wilkinson. Mr. Wilkinson, who was born in Barbados, died one week ago at the age of 83 after a brief illness. During a special sitting at the number one high court on Wednesday, High Court Judge, the Honorable Madam Justice Claire Henry, described him as a man of value, worth, and success. She said he left behind an outstanding record of selfless service, of which many can be proud. Madam Justice Claire Henry said two events involving Mr. Wilkinson stand out in her mind, her presiding at his elevation at one of Her Majesty's Council, and his service on the training subcommittee of the bench bar. The bench bar in 2009-2010 had decided to launch quarterly training sessions for the registry staff. We decided that we needed some expertise to guide us in this endeavor. To this end, we formed a subcommittee made up of former registrars of the court and senior practitioners. Of course, Mr. Wilkinson QC was one of the first names proposed. I recall placing the call to request his assistance, and without any trace of hesitation, he readily consented. Thereafter, he was at every meeting, giving of his time and ideas on how to improve service in the registry. He functioned as one of our valued resource persons. We are all very grateful that he was willing to share this expertise with us. Member of the Inner Bar, Mrs. Celia Edwards QC, said Mr. Wilkinson died as he lived without the need for fame or fanfare. She believes that up to the time of his death, he was not even aware of the level of respect and admiration that many had for him. Because even when I was a child, Mr. Wilkinson was already legendary in the court system as registrar. He ran a court, the court with an efficiency that was envied all over the Caribbean. 
And then he opened his own firm and ran it with the same efficiency that he ran the registry. And he's passed on those managerial skills to Margaret. And so his legacy lives on. He opened his firm and he welcomed first Margaret, then Rosalind, then, then Shireen. And he enjoyed his practice to the day he passed. Because E.C. Wilkinson loved the law. He was always supportive of the profession, helpful and encouraging to younger practitioners. He was an outstanding conveyancer, and his precedence will continue to be used by those students of conveyancing who love language. Also remembering the life and work of Mr. Wilkinson was Attorney General Rohan Phillip. He says his true legacy is that of being Registrar of the Supreme Court of Grenada and the Windward and Leeward Islands for more than 20 years. I recall even as a student at the T.A. Marisha Community College where I did my first year of the law degree, his chambers and library was always available to us. Those students are not being schooled yet in the proper practice of the use of a law library. He never reprimanded us. He never frowned if we left the books in the improper place or so. Always willing to help. Always willing to guide. My lords, my lady, I am sure that his legacy will live on in the sterling chambers that he has left behind, which his daughters now carry. And the Director of Public Prosecution, Christopher Nelson, said while he had no professional encounters with Mr. Wilkinson, he embodies the quintessential lawyer. He has also left us the legacy of that prominent law chambers, E.C. Wilkinson, which later became Wilkinson, Wilkinson, and Wilkinson. I think for me, he has left a feat that I don't think any of us could match. <coughs> to have three daughters, at least well, four, is a feat these days. And to have three of them as members of the legal fraternity is indeed amazing. The people of the OECS are likely to benefit further from the commitment and goodwill shown by the government and people of Brazil through a recent visit to that country's new ambassador of that country's new resident ambassador to the OECS. His Excellency Joachim Salis presented his credentials to Dr. Lenishmel, Director General of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, and became the second ambassador resident representative of Brazil to the OECS on Tuesday. During the ceremony, which involved members of the Secretariat and members of the Diplomatic Corps, both representatives spoke of the significance and importance of the special relationship between Brazil and the OECS. The President of Brazil, Mrs. Dilma Rousseff, has for her part mentioned the integration of Latin America and the Caribbean as a promising engine for development in a world in crisis. I feel that somehow we are linked in this chain. It fills one with a sense of added responsibility. Dr. Ismail, the dynamism of this organization is visible. Right here in St. Lucia, there were two meetings at the end of last month sponsored by it. The ninth meeting of the Council of Tourism Ministers convened on 20th April, which will have discussed the recovery of this vital industry for the region and a training workshop on household survey methods, a practical and useful tool in this domain. Moreover, only last Friday, as you mentioned during our previous talk, on the 4th of May, leaders and other members of the parliamentary opposition 
in OECS member states met. Also in St. Lucia, on an initiative of Honorable Prime Minister Kenny Anthony, president of this organization, to discuss such major themes as the operationalization of the OECS Economic Union and the inauguration in Antigua next June of the OECS Assembly of Parliamentarians, one of the five main and crucial structures of the treaty, the revised Treaty of Bastia. This forthcoming meeting will set a pioneering democratic structure for the debate on regional common matters and the search for consensual courses of action. As Dr. Orlando Smith, the Prime Minister of the British Virgin Islands, commented in his intervention during the opening of the 54th meeting of the authority, the OECS is to be commanded as an example for regional organizations. Dr. Ishmael, I am grateful for having had this opportunity to speak at the OECS. I have no doubt that Brazil and the OECS have many areas in which they can join efforts and generate results other than those that have already been described by you for the mutual benefit of our peoples. I shall work very seriously with that in mind. Thank you. That's the Brazilian ambassador to the OECS, Joaquim Saez. OECS Director General Dr. Len Ishmael took the opportunity to enunciate the various cooperation initiatives currently ongoing between Brazil and the OECS, noting with satisfaction and gratitude Brazil's generosity as a major partner in the regionally administered antiretroviral program that provides medicine to more than 700 people living with HIV AIDS across the region. Brazil has been a most reliable and generous partner and there is no better example of this than that which is evidenced under the technical cooperation agreement signed between Brazil and the OECS in 2006, whereby Brazil committed to donating antiretroviral medicines for up to 500 OECS persons living with HIV AIDS. Under this program, Brazil provides antiretrovirals valued at about half a million dollars annually and covers as well the cost of shipping those medicines to the OECS. However, the full extent of Brazil's generosity does not end here, for when the number of persons requiring access to these medicines was scaled up to over 700 persons, the government of Brazil very quietly absorbed the additional cost, despite the fact that this went well beyond the scope of its original commitment under our cooperation agreement. We can never be thankful enough for this show of commitment and goodwill. And so, Ambassador, I ask you to allow me to take this opportunity to express again, and on behalf of the governments and the peoples of the OECS, our sincere and most profound thanks to the government of Brazil for its generosity and commitment to a program that has decreased the mortality and morbidity rate of hundreds of persons in our region living with HIV AIDS, as well improved their quality of life, certainly over the last five years. I wish also to thank the Brazilian authorities for agreeing to extend the agreement over another two years in order to allow for an uninterrupted supply of antiretrovirals to patients across our region until the year 2013 and guarantee them continu continuity in treatment, which is so important for improving longevity. I am confident, Excellency, that under your tenure, the OECS in Brazil will continue to collaborate on the means to further improve the operational framework of the agreement over the long term. Representatives from the Illinois Institute of Technology are in Grenada to meet with students of the T.A. Marichaux Community College who are interested in furthering their studies at the Institute. They will conduct interviews at Tam Cece's Hospitality Hall from 10 a.m. on Thursday. The school offers 31 undergraduate programs for people to choose from all prospectives who are interested in this opportunity are welcome to come down to the hospitality hall from 10 a.m. Uh, bring along your transcript, your letters of recommendation, whatever you may have, 
and come to be interviewed for this opportunity. Last year was the first time we had uh, this relationship and we had five of our students uh, going to IIT. Uh, those five students, most of them actually came directly out of uh, second year students. So graduation, right after graduation, they were able to get in on that opportunity and right now they're studying biology, chemical engineering, electrical engineering, and chemistry. Uh, for those who might be interested, you would you can also visit the IIT website to see the list of programs they have, to see that uh, whether or not the programs they have match up with your interests. And the school offers beyond, you would have heard me mention, more science and technical uh, fields, but the school offers a range of programs, 31 undergraduate programs to be exact, that people may have to choose from. So this is a wonderful opportunity mm -hmm. for our young Grenadians, our TAM CC alumni, our second year students about to graduate. That's TAM CC's Public Relations Officer, Mrs. Camille Goddard. She says to be eligible, students must complete their associate degrees with a GPA average of at least 3.5. Local students are already attending the IIT following its first recruitment drive last year. One of the scholarship opportunities is called the Presidential Scholarship. And this is where IIT is working with a range of community colleges all over the world in the Caribbean, TAM CC in Grenada, and in St. Lucia, so Arthur Lewis. And so they're working with these community colleges to give students a better opportunity to further their education. And with the Presidential Scholarship, this focuses on what we call the STEM plus areas of study, so that's science, technology, engineering, math, and I, the plus includes business and psychology now. So if you're interested in those areas in particular, uh, they're looking to have you uh, continue your studies there. And you're also expected with the Presidential Scholarship, one aspect of it is not just about your GPA, because at, as like TAMCC, IIT also values the holistic person. So it's not just about your academics, but your social skills, your desire for, to give feedback to your community, your personality, all these things matter. And so one requirement of that presidential scholarship is that the students who are awarded this are expected to complete a project within either their own community, so maybe they come back to Grenada and complete a project with a secondary school, with their community, or complete a project in Chicago itself but do something whereby you can give back to others. So it's not just about receiving, but about using the talents that you have so others can benefit. TAM CC also provides opportunities for people wishing to further their studies without leaving the country. Mrs. Goddard says this can be pursued through their affiliation with the University College of the Caribbean. Its website is ucc.edu.jm. Another relationship we've fostered is with the University College of the Caribbean, UCC. And UCC, we've had our first cohort of students last year going through the program. And the benefit of that is that people can stay here in Grenada, continue to work, and get their education through distance and online education. I must mention that for the upcoming semester, which is a semester that will start in August. The UCC deadline is June the 30th. So anyone who's interested and specifically their focus on uh, bachelors of uh, uh, BA in public administration in information technology, which is a really big thing now here in Grenada, uh, in marketing. They also do have executive masters, so those of those people who would already complete that bachelor level, they have executive masters in public administration and business administration. You're watching the GIS News Hour. We'll be right back.
Sometimes, the simplest joys in life can be the most rewarding. For quality sexual and reproductive health care services, make the GPPA your next stop. Visit our offices at St. George's and Grenville. Call 440-3341 or 442-5442 for more information. The Grenada Planned Parenthood Association, promoting healthy living. Home is supposed to be my comfort zone. Yet, I'm in fear and feel so alone. My mother receives money. Yes, money from men who sexually abuse me. I tried to tell my mom, but she won't listen to me. She said, he's my big brother, my uncle, your father, my man. Don't call anyone's name. I never wanted this. I need to tell someone. Please, help me. A message from the Ministry of Social Development and its social partners. Continuing the news, Grenadians would soon have access to all these services offered by the University of the West Indies without leaving the island. Government, through the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development, continues to work toward achieving a goal that has been in the vision and hope of many for years. According to Minister for Education and Human Resource Development, Senator Franca Alexis Bernadine, the groundbreaking for the start of construction of the facility that will house the open campus Grenada could come as soon as October of this year. The University of the West Indies will be putting a um, Campus 12 um, branch here, hopefully to ground break at the end of this year, by October of 2012. Now, the significance for us, and imagine it for yourselves, if I could put it that way, what it would be like to have a branch of the UWI right here in Grenada. We have seen what it has been like and the benefits brought to us by having the St. George's University here and a campus where people could attend. We have over 1,000 Grenadians attending in various stages of courses, part-time and full-time, at St. George's University. There's no need to travel overseas or otherwise because it is available here. We now have a second choice coming on stream, and a choice, let me point out, that um, brings us into close association with CARICOM, we are jointly responsible, along with all other Caribbean islands, for the University of the West Indies. And that has to be a big breakthrough in providing tertiary education for our people. Senator Bernadine has recently returned from the University of the West Indies Council meeting, attended by education ministers from across the region. According to the minister, the university is making significant strides in its offerings. I'm happy to say that they're making tremendous progress in research, also in areas I see they've introduced a fine arts degree now at Cave Hill, which is going to allow our people, our people in drama and arts to be able to access that degree opportunity, and a lot of changes, which I look forward to presenting to the public at some point in time. But I do want to ask you to put on the radar the fact that by the end of this year, we will have the groundbreaking ceremony for the development of the um, University of the West Indies here in Grenada. The University of the West Indies, although present in Grenada, has not been able to make available to potential students its maximum benefits and opportunities as provided by other UE institutions throughout the region. This is seen as one of the disadvantages associated with the minimal physical space that the institution has been operating in. A major victory for Grenada's Immigration Department it has placed a second from a field of more than 400 participants in the 2012 UN Public Service Award program in the category of improving the delivery services. It is the most prestigious international recognition of excellence in public service and rewards the creative achievements and contributions of public service institutions to a more effective and responsive public administration in countries worldwide. One of the criteria, I'll just state out some of the criteria, efficient, um, increasing efficiency. And this had to do with the streamlining processes, 
the reducing red tips and things of that sort. Then we had to provide high quality service delivery. And that had to do with the, the timeliness, um, access and client orientation in the public service. The feedbacks towards how we give to citizens was also measured. The improve access and promote equity in how we deliver our services to the public. The partnership, which was also highlighted, how effective was the partnership with the private sector, other civil agencies, non-government organizations, and the ordinary customer. This was showcased. And the most important one, I will say, the introduction towards a new concept in how you do your, your, your customer service in partnership with the community. That's head of the Immigration Department, Superintendent Godfrey Fleming. The UN Public Service Award is an annual event which promotes the role, professionalism, and visibility of public service. The event marked the 10th anniversary of the United Nations Awards Program. Gone are the days where before people might have got a passport within three months, uh, sometimes six weeks. But now we have brought it to, to five days and quite recently, under a month, people are receiving passports in three days' time. We also have a service in place which we call a, a service express, where someone can receive a passport based on the needs, an emergency need, within an hour. So those are the, the things that, that are highlighted. Outside of our customer service or our day-to-day -day work, we will also measure in how we had perform and execute in outreach programs. And the outreach programs, as you all might be knowledgeable about, we also played a pivotal role by visiting some of the, our, our homes, donating things that they are, they are in need of. We also had a program where we visit schools, secondary schools. We are targeting the secondary schools, especially in familiarizing them on the CSME programs and also our CARICOM and on, on the CARICOM levels. Prime Minister the Honorable Tillman Thomas says the achievement is in keeping with his government's ongoing efforts to improve the ability of the Grenada Public Service to deliver quality customer service to its clients. He says, and I quote, this is an outstanding achievement for our immigration department. It is even more significant considering that this program involved the entire 192 member states of the United Nations. I congratulate the department on this achievement, which should encourage all public officers to focus on improving the quality of service we provide to the community, unquote. Mr. Fleming, meanwhile, adds that they want to ensure Grenada remains a great destination. The immigration also has a role to play, and we are also playing that role. So it's like two departments in one, right? We'll continue to be vigilant, as, as we always do, and we still will ask for the support of the public in helping us to create that environment where each and every citizen and genuine visitor could be here in a comfortable atmosphere. That's news. Sports is up next. is not over as yet. Thursday, May 31st, get set for the annual Ribena Private Primary School Athletics Championship. National Athletic Stadium from 11 a.m. Be there for the sprints, throws, jumps, bicycle races, and the ever-exciting relays. Will the Grenada Junior Academy continue to dominate or will one of the other 16 schools triumph? Only time will tell. Admission, $10 adults, children pay three. So come root for your school. Thursday, May 31st, the 2012 Ribena-sponsored private primary school
Rules Athletics Championship. Stars will be born. Grenada, the wait is finally over. After six weeks of exciting football, the Grenada Super League brings the curtain down with the grand finals on Saturday, May 12 at the National Stadium. Come witness Game 1, St. Andrew Planters, Frosts and David Lyons in the third place playoff. Game 2 will feature the battle for the championship between the St. Patrick Chiefs and the St. Mark Sharks. After the games, the red carpet will be rolled out for the mother with a special guest appearance from Grenada's best talent 2010 winner, Josh Berkeley. Josh Berkeley, the Jab Jab Ambassador, Tal Prey, the 2011 Soka Mona, Terra King, Gary Cruz 2012 Roadmark, Shot Prey, the Whining King, Brother B, Hot Girl Tracy, and the number one jam band, The Roots Man. Music by DJs Killer Sound and Mix Master Brand. Your MC, Double L, Added Attraction, Ponce's Giveaway, Flat Screen TV, Smartphone, Zena for Two, Food Vouchers, and a whole lot more. Admission $10 in advance, more at the door. Children on the 12 pay 5, Ticket Outlets, Boss FM, and the GFA on Gates open at 5. It's the Grenada Super League Grand Finals. This Saturday, May 12 at the National Stadium. Ponces, Boss FM, Real Value IGA Supermarket, the Grenada National Lottery Authority, Real Grenada Limited, West Hall Estate Limited, Grenada Cooperative Bank Limited, Cartwell Stationery Services, Party Shack, Dodgy Talk, m and n Hardware, Carib, Shield Promotion, and the Grenada Bottling Company Limited. Hello, Chris Gale reaches 500 runs in the 2012 India Premier League to, league to lead the Royal Challengers Bangalore to a crushing Nanwick win over the Mumbai Indians. Uh, a thrilling United Insurance National Secondary Schools final in the making when McDonald College and St. David's Catholic Secondary School SDCSS clash Friday in Grenville. And organizers of the Organizers are delighted with the outcome of 2012 Grenada Triathlon held on Sunday. These and more are in this edition of the GIS Sports. Hello, I'm Trevor Thwaites. Uh, starting with cricket, Chris Gale produced another brilliant innings to lead the Royal Challengers Bangalore to an emphatic nine-wicket win over the Mumbai Indians in the India Premier League. Uh, Gale scored a blistering unbeaten 82 from just 59 balls with six sixes and five fours to lead his team to 142 for one, chasing 141 made by the Mumbai Indians. The Indians took Gale to 500 runs this season in the competition. Mumbai Indians with fellow West Indians Dwayne Smith and Kieran Pollard scored 141 for six, with uh, Murali Carter 44, Sachin Tendulkar 24, and Kieran Pollard 21 not out uh, from 13 balls included two sixes. Uh, Smith only scored two. The win has pushed the Royal Challengers Bangalore into fourth position and in with a good chance of making it to the playoff. Uh, Chris Gale, Mutaya Muralitaran, Tilika Ratni Dilchan and A.B. De Villiers are key members of the Royal Challengers Bangalore. Well, the West Indies have been bolstered by the arrival in England of uh, Samuel and uh, Marlon Samuel and Asad Fudadeen for the series against their hosts. Samuel arrived Tuesday from the IPL in India, while Fudadeen flew in Wednesday from Jamaica, where he was detained before sorting out his visa. Reports indicate that fellow Ghanese Nasin Dunaran was expected to join the team Wednesday, that's uh, earlier today, after enduring similar problems. Both Samuel and Fudadeen are being considered for selection for the four-day game against the England Lions uh, starting at Northampton on Thursday. However, Diona Ryan will not be considered, considered for selection. Skipper Darren Sammy is happy with the new arrivals, saying that he has 14 fit players uh, from which to choose a strong squad. The players are looking forward to get much-needed match practice ahead of the first test against England starting next week Thursday at Lords. Unlike other Caribbean countries, Ghanese and the Jamaican nationals need to apply for visas to get to England, hence the reason for the late arrival of uh, Samuel Fudadeen and Diona Ryan. We hope that they will quickly acclimatize themselves and really get ready for the battle against the English. 
Well, here at home, a keen and exciting United Insurance uh, National Secondary School Cricket Finals is expected when MacDonald College and St. David's Catholic Secondary School SDCSS clash Friday at Progress Park in the Big Paris in Andrew. Magnal College beat the 2011 champions Grenville Secondary School by 46 runs, while SDCSS topped the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School SAS by two runs in the semifinals last week, Friday. Senior cricket coach in the Department of Sports, Rafael Crony, says that a game, a good game, is in the making. When I look at the semifinals, one would have thought that St. David's would have gone pretty, pretty easily over SAS. That didn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, McDonald College at 135, one would have felt that GSS have a pretty good chance over mm -hmm. all that. That didn't mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it would be a very keen and, and gripping finals. Uh, I think it go anyway. Uh, McDonald College boasts of pretty good, a pretty good bowling attack. What it seems, Jenard Paul, Craig Phillip, fast bowler. Uh, I think there's a left arm spinner in Jimmy Pierre who have done pretty well against GSS. I think he took, tops, he took some five wickets. So their bowling attack seem to be pretty good. That's McDonald College. While I think St. David's team seem to be a bit more balanced mm -hmm. in terms of um, batting and also bowling. So I think it would be a keen contest. And I think the team that plays well on the day is certainly going to come forward. Crony says that all structures are in place for a truly terrific final. We are hoping to bring commentary, bring live commentary. Mm -hmm. And after the game, we will have a presentation where we would award persons who would have done pretty well in the tournament, the well deserved prizes. Uh, there are monetary prizes for the winning team and also the run out team. And, um, and let me just say that I think that United Insurance have done so well that they have continued to, to make sure that this event continues. That's the 22nd? And, uh, that's the 22nd. Uh, uh. And um, we are hoping to have the minister there have various remarks and so forth and then the presentation of prizes. But we really want to lift the standard in terms of all the preparation for the games and the game in terms of uh, all, all the logistics that goes with it, you know, or side screen or wicket or field, you know, really have the commentary set. Um, all aspects we're trying to ma make sure that we lift it so we'll have a, a pretty good finals. Two months into two months of cricket, according to the former Grenada opening batsman, has uh, seen some good cricket with new talent emerging. We have seen, you know, some new players coming forward. We had just, just a couple centuries being scored. Um, Kelton Kadu, and then we had um, um, this young player from GBSS, um, who had just made Grenada team. Um, Keon George? Keon George. Yeah. He did have a century, you know. But I think all in all, I think we had a good tournament, and mm. really, we have seen some youngsters uh, coming forward. Senior cricket coach in the Department of Sports, Rafa Crony. Organizers of the 2012 Grenada Triathlon are happy with the outcome of the event last Sunday in and around the Port Louis Rami Rami uh, Marina in St. George's. Close to 300 participants from Grenada, the region, and the beyond competed in the three event disciplines swimming, running, and biking. The turn of events were heartening for the rector, Mark DeCole. We had uh, big teams from Trinidad, teams from Barbados, teams from St. Lucia. We had teams from Antigua. Uh, and then we also had teams from the USA, from Canada, from the UK, Germany, Norway. Uh, so big, big teams uh, here for the event. So very excited. Were you expecting that? I mean, in terms of your build up, your promotions, were you expecting that kind of? Yeah, I think so. I, I suppose that was really what I was aiming for this year, uh, and I tried to set realistic targets. So last year, uh, it was about 220, I think, to 240, and so this year I was hoping for about 300. So uh, I get, you know, very happy with the turnout overall. Trinidadian Anil Green won the men's event with Canadian Chris uh, Regis finishing second. Uh, German Alexandria Kostin took the ladies' division with Inga Karasek finishing uh, second. The call is hoping that Regis will grow and develop into the sport. He's definitely got the makings to do extremely well on the international scene. Uh, last year he, he had a little issue, he wasn't well before and he ended up not finishing the race. Uh, but this year he came through with a really strong second place race. 
uh, you know, his biking uh, really surprised me actually, his Im improvement on the bike. And Stromit, just general, generally a very, very good athlete. So, uh, uh, you know, I hope that he stays with it. I know swimming is his priority, but uh, I, I really hope to see him take Top. track out seriously. Dick Hold is uh, striving to get more locals involved in the sport, especially youngsters. We had competitors as young as four years old uh, taking part, and they just have a great time. And, uh, you know, so there's somebody that's going to keep doing it year after year, and in 10 years' time, as somebody who could really be competitive on the, uh, on the international scene. Uh, and then we had uh, athletes in their late 60s taking part as well. The governing body has just added uh, new age groups uh, to the World Championships, the age group World Championships, and that's a 90 plus category because they're seeing so many people in their 90s doing the sport. So it really does target a, a really wide range of, of individuals. And uh, we showed that off here on the weekend and say with the amount of kids that we had starting from four right up to adults in their 60s taking part. The man in charge of the Grenada Triathlon, Mark Decaul. The Grenada, the Grenada and OCS sprint uh, event uh, was won by Troy Felix, who had to fight back after falling behind in the first event. Uh, that's a 750 uh, meter swim. Troy Felix winning the sprint uh, among Grenadians and the OCS. Finally, sponsor of the uh, private primary school at an exposed meeting, Ribena, wants to see more or see some novelty events included in the 2012 event. Uh, a number of events have been considered for the first time in the event schedule for May 31st at the National Stadium. We are suggesting, for example, a PTRs, where each school, each school participating in the game would have a relay team. As a matter of fact, we're suggesting two races, one male, one female, where you comp and the, the relay teams comprise of parents and teachers. Not necessarily for points to add to who would win or not, but just that the kids would have some more funds. More, so more fun. And we think that, that each school could in fact bring a 4 by one female PTA team and a 4 by one male PTA team. If both can happen, we would at least love to see a mixture with at least one female or at least one male on the team. Rabin official there, George Trebin. Fans are said to be in for a treat, an added treat this year. Ribena would be giving out goodies to the spectators, the children and parents at the games this year. Um, so that you don't just come and look at athletics, but you benefit from, from prizes as uh, spectators. And this is done so that the children would be exposed to more people at a national stadium to get a higher level of excitement at the meet. Another of the officials for the uh, Ribena Private Primary School Sports Meeting, Bruce Swan. That's sports. I'm Trevor Thwaites. The National Water and Sewage Authority in Awasa wishes to advise consumers that disconnection officers will be operating in the following area effective Monday, May 14, 2012. The Parish of St. George, Triblu, Frequente, The Lines, Grand Dance, Grand Dance Housing Scheme, Manhattan, Fenton Village, Coffeeable Hill, Montu, Bay Gardens, Mondelis, Mont Airy, Spring Garden, Hopevale, Mardi Gras, Bocage, Clarence Hill, Good Hope, St. Paul's, Mount Panassas, Adams Alley, Baines Alley, Briggs Alley, Cox Alley, Green Street, Ichibley Street, Lucas Street, Park Lane, Woolwich Road, and the entire town of St. George. The Parish of St. David, Pedmata, Wester Hall, Wester Hall Point, Wester Hall Heights, Old Wester Hall, New Wester Hall, La Suggest, Rigid Panel, La Colombe, Stone Street, Pitibakai, and Red Gate. The Parish of St. Andrew, Lower Capital, Rudge Grove, Providence, Beauregard, Adelphi, Upper Capital, 
St. James, Noah's Hill, Ladigue, Bellevue, Monson Evans, Holy Innocent, De Blando, Walker, Pleasance, Post Royal, Munich, Union, Mont Carmel, Tilleries, Richmond, Pleasance, Carruth, Halford Village, Leicester, and the Villa, the Parish of St. Patrick, Gleb Street, Main Street, Chantemau, Upper and Lower Latast, Rose Hill, Plains, River Sally, Bathway, Bathway Development, Livera Beach Development, Mount Fendue, Welcome, Cedars, Belmont, Hermitage, Pointsfield, Observatory, Mount Rose, Pegaswim, Mount Rue, Mount Rich, Top Hill, La Mode, Madez, Mount Fendue, Main Street, Snell Hall, La Fortune, Cedars, and Marley. Consumers are reminded that accounts in arrears over 30 days are liable for disconnection and reconnection is not guaranteed before 48 hours. If you are experiencing difficulties in servicing your accounts, please visit or contact our revenue collections unit to arrange payments. Remember, no one wins with disconnection, so pay others on time to avoid the inconvenience. NOASA, committed to meeting customers' needs. Thank you, Trevor. Recapping the main points, glowing tribute paid to prominent legal official Mr. Ernest Wilkinson QC, who died last week. Representatives from Illinois Institute seeking to woo more TAM CC students. They will be conducting interviews at the school from 10 o'clock on Thursday, and the OECS to benefit from further commitments from Brazil. That is the GIS News Hour. I'm Leslie and Johnson Cornwall. On behalf of all those who made it possible, we thank you for viewing. You're watching the Government Information Service, channels 12 and 22.